Hello and welcome back to Jenna Gets Creative. Today we are doing No Box Art Box again and I am so excited to do this one. First of all, what is the No Box Art Box Challenge? Well, it's a challenge where you replicate the experience of an art or craft subscription box without actually getting that box. It's a good way to save money, it's a good way to try out the concept of a service or try the challenge before you commit to it. It's also a good way just to reuse supplies maybe you got once and never used again. So you're going to pick a past art subscription or craft subscription box. If you want to figure out how to do it with another type of box, go ahead, but uh, the rules I'm about to give work best for arts and crafts, so you might have to make some changes. Number two, once you have picked that past box, any box you want, go ahead and look up what supplies came in the box and then match them as close as possible using the supplies you already own. You can have exact matches as long as you didn't get them in the box that you are replicating. So for example, if I am replicating one of the scroller boxes, any of the scroller boxes since May of 2018, I've that's when I started subscribing. I would have to use completely different items because I actually got those boxes. Since I am replicating a box I didn't get, if any of my supplies are exact matches, that's fine. And step number three, just do the challenge. If the box had a prompt or a theme, try to stick to it, otherwise your challenge is simply to make art, make your craft, whatever it is you're doing, using only the supplies you have matched for the box. Exceptions are allowed for adding necessities like a pencil or a piece of paper. Don't add anything that changes the game, just add what you need to actually complete the task. So what box are we doing? Well, for the first time I am going to be doing Upcrate as a no box art box challenge. Yes, I did do Upcrate number four December legitimately here on this channel. I got that one. I I have not renewed. I am excited to do the January box, box number five. Weblight Dreams is doing that and she hasn't filmed her video yet. I know she doesn't want spoilers, so I'm being a nice friend and I'm going backwards first and doing box number three, November, and we'll tackle the January box shortly. So what was in that box? That box had quite a few things. It seems like Upgrade always sends a lot of items and I don't know, it always adds up to a pretty good savings if you're just going by the suggested retail price of all of the items. I don't know if they actually have managed to get deals that are that good or if they're trying to hook everybody in and if the value will decrease in the next year. I don't know. I'm going to be watching them closely. I'm going to be doing lots of no box art box challenges with them because when it comes time to renew my subscriptions later on in the year, I don't know, I may consider switching. Who knows? <laughs> so I will be putting all of these prices and all of the uh, subscription cost to box value savings calculations in the description box down below. Since Upcrate uses euros, I am doing it in euros, pounds, US dollars, and Canadian dollars. You don't have to try and read this, I'm not going to mention it right now, it will all be in the description box down below. So they sent out a 12-pack of Stedler Super Soft Colored Pencils. These are just your basic wax based lead colored pencils. They sent out a Stedler Mars Lumograph Pencil in 2H. They sent out a Koinor 3800-0 Blender Wooden Pencil. A Koinor 8750 Progresso Woodless Pencil in white. A Pilot Color Eno Mechanical Pencil and Lead in green. Frida color white. Now, their website says chalk pastel pencil. The photo is an oil pencil. I'm gonna go with the oil pastel pencil. A loafer multi-purpose eraser. That's just a fancy dual colored eraser that's all the same material all the way through despite the fact that it's dual colored. A random plastic sharpener single hole and some miscellaneous paper clips. A Folia brand washi tape, some brown sketch paper, and some black drawing paper. So what am I going to use to replicate this box? 
I do have that exact set of 12 super soft pencils from Stedler because Scrawlerbox sent it out in their March box last year, so I will be using those. I will also be using the exact graphite pencil because Stedler Mars Lumograph is the only ones I have a full set of, and 2H happens to be my favorite lid, so I have a ton specifically of that. For the blender pencil, I will be using Prismacolor Premier. When Scrawlerbox sent out all of these colored pencils, they sent out a Derwent blender, but I'm going to mix it up and use the Prismacolor Premier. If you want my opinion on the Derwent ones, you can go find that scrawler box unboxing for the progresso woodless white pencil that's exactly what i have because this was also sent out in the same scrawler box as these super soft pencils really it's quite useless i don't like it but i will use it again for this because that's what the challenge demands for the pilot color eno pencil i do have a pilot color eno mechanical pencil and a legitimate Pilot Color Eno Lead. This is the 0.7 millimeter. I don't have green, so we're gonna go ahead and use blue. In place of the Creta Color pastel pencil, I could pull out a chalk pencil from Creta Color that's in a very pale yellow. I could pull out a chalk pastel pencil from uh, Stabilo Carbothello that is actually white, but I'm interested in the fact that it's an oil-based pencil in the actual upgrade box and it's supposed to blend well with the colored pencils. So I'm going to use a Faber-Castell Polychromos pencil in white because this is an oil-based colored pencil. In place of the loafer eraser, I have a generic two-colored eraser. This is just your basic white eraser. Came in a geometry set. I have no idea what brand it is. In place of the folio washi tape, the washi tape that was sent in the box is similar to this one. It's about this size. It has some metallic details on it. And um, I could use this, but since I'm going to be using it with pencils and that uh, means I can get fine details, I would rather use this one. For that plastic sharpener, I have a generic black plastic pencil sharpener also out of a geometry set. I'm not going to bother bringing out the paper clips because I expect those were a free gift in the box and I don't know how to use them in a pencil drawing. <laughs> For the paper, they seem to like to send out two paper options so that you have a choice. They don't really require that you use them both in the challenge. I could pull out that uh, black paint-on paper by Claire Fontaine from the recent Scrawler box, but I don't want to do another pencil sketch on that so close together with that actual unboxing, so I'm going to go with the brown paper. I have just a very generic brown craft paper sketchbook from the dollar store and I'll pull a page out of this and use this. The Upcrate Battle topic or prompt from the November box was Never Stop Dreaming and the featured artist Jocelyx did an interesting multi-part illustration where she used the washi tape to block out borders and breaks that were left blank. I decided to play off that and create a Dreamcatcher illustration with some of these interesting angular blanks. What would you do if you did this box? Everyone is welcome to try the NoBox ArtBox challenge. Use the hashtag NoBoxArtBox, all one word, when you post your NoBox ArtBox pieces so I can see them. I do curate a master playlist for the challenge here on YouTube, and it's beneficial to everyone on the list because it helps drive views and discovery to all of our videos. Feel free to message me somewhere out there on social media or drop a comment on one of my videos if you really want to make sure I see your NoBox ArtBox pieces so that I can share them on the playlist list even sooner. I like to challenge different artists to try the NoBox ArtBox challenge when I do it, but of course everyone is welcome to try the challenge even if you aren't tagged, and if you are tagged, you don't have to pick the exact box that I or someone else was doing when you were tagged. Today I'm going to challenge Alljay Art, Chocoberry, and Feywolf.
So I actually watched the official upgrade video that went along with this box, where they showcased Jocelyx's time lapse creating the featured artwork, and after watching her work with these pencils on the tan craft paper, and then trying these pencils on tan craft paper, I've come to the conclusion that the paper included in the box is a much higher quality than my dollar store notebook. I don't think anyone is shocked about that. <laughs> Mine feels like butcher paper. It's thin, smooth, and slightly shiny. Because of that, it didn't really want to take layers, so when I put dark colors over light layers, the blending wasn't perfectly smooth and it did look a little scratchy. Jocelyx's blending is flawless and that probably means the paper originally in the box had some more tooth to it to grab the additional layers and it was almost certainly heavier in weight. By the way, if you're new here, I'd love it if you would subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload twice a week at minimum on Tuesdays and Thursdays with bonus uploads some weeks. I've actually got a bonus slotted in for every Friday in February, so the next four weeks will be three video minimum weeks. Great time to join in the fun if you're new here. I'm trying to qualify for the YouTube Partner Program this year and I'll be holding an international giveaway when I do, so be sure to subscribe to be eligible. If you like this video, don't forget to hit like and leave a comment down below. I love reading your comments, I appreciate the interaction on my videos, and I do reply to everyone. Have you tried any of these supplies before? Have you tried Upgrade? Let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see me use these pencils on better paper, creating smoother blends, again, I did get these in the March 2019 Scholar Box, so you can go find that unboxing video. I put that video out in mid to late April, shortly after the fire at the Notre Dame de Paris Cathedral, so my piece was a tribute to Notre Dame. It's a very simplified and stylized dancer, colored to be reminiscent of Esmeralda from Disney's Hunchback of Notre Dame, and she's dancing in front of a colorful mandala that was inspired by one of the cathedral's large rose windows. I also gave my thoughts and concerns about the Progresso woodless pencils in that video, and the blender pencil Scrawler Box sent out was the Derwent blender. Actually, they sent out the blender and burnisher set, so I used both. If you're sitting here watching this video wondering what the heck a blender or burnisher pencil is, let me explain. I've only ever seen them offered by brands that champion primarily wax-based colored pencil formulas, so I'm not entirely sure if you can get them for oil-based pencils or if these wax-based ones would work on oil pencils. I haven't tried. A colorless blender pencil actually does blend, as the name implies, unlike colorless blender markers, which dilute. Blender pencils are a soft wax-based core of pencil binder without any pigment of its own, so when you work a blender pencil into an area where you've already applied some of the other colored pencils, you can blend just like you would with other colored pencils, but without depositing more color. This helps with smoothing out visible strokes and nudging colors around to get a bit of a smoother blend or gradient without actually making something too dark or saturated. Blending pencils can be used whenever you want, as many times as you want, if you use the right techniques. A burnisher pencil is a much harder wax core, also without any pigment of its own, which is meant for burnishing your finished sections. Burnishing is the act of pushing the pigment firmly into the paper, brushing the tooth of the paper so that everything is smooth. This results in a printed or photo-like finish, but prevents any further layering. A blender pencil, or even the colored pencils themselves, can be used to burnish, but a hard-cored burnishing pencil will do the job without depositing more color and while using far less of the core than the softer blender pencil would. I also wanted to mention that while I called the Progresso pencil absolutely useless in the supply collection process, that was based on my prior experience using it in the Scrawler Box project. It isn't pigmented enough to layer white on top of other colors, so on white paper, with specially formulated blender and burnisher pencils available, it truly was useless. On different colored paper, it turns out it does indeed lay down some white pigment. I still definitely wouldn't be reaching for this pencil over any other white pencils, but if it's what you've got and you're working on paper that isn't white, it'll work for coloring your white areas directly on the page, but not for correcting or recoloring on top of other pigment. Also, no, the 8750 Progressive Woodless pencils are not the watercolor pencils. Yes, they look like woodless watercolor pencils put out by several brands, including Kohinoor and Arteza, but these aren't them. They're regular wax-based colored pencils. 
As for the Stedler Super Soft Colored Pencils, if you've seen the Scholar Box video they came from, you already know I love these. They aren't polychromos or luminance by any means, but they absolutely work at least as good as Prismacolor Scholars or Faber-Castell Gold Favors. I keep this set in my travel pencil roll. I do wish this set came with a white, because people buying this set separate from a subscription box like Scholar Box or Upgrade wouldn't necessarily have the other white pencils these boxes sent, or anything else similar. To compensate for the lack of white in my own travel set, I do keep a white gold favor with it. And also, after watching the time-lapse video of Jocelyx creating the featured artwork from Upgrade, I'm absolutely convinced that I made the right choice in using a polychromos pencil to replace the Creatacolor white pencil. When Jocelyx used it, it did layer opaquely on top of the colored pencils like any high-quality pastel pencil would, but unlike a drier chalk pastel pencil formula, it blended smoothly with the waxy colored pencils. So the original Creatacolor pencil absolutely was an oil-based pencil as I thought. Polychromos is an oil-based colored pencil, not an oil-based pastel pencil, but it proved to be close enough. And if anyone's upset about the fact that I pulled a random lid out and traced it for a circle, Jocelyx traced her washi tape to make circles, so fair game, I say.